Okay, um, volumes, pressures, and hydraulic systems. That's what we want to talk about. And the first thing that we really need to address is a law well, called Pascal's Principle. Blaise Pascal was a French mathematician and philosopher, and he lived a few hundred years ago, but he was a very smart man. Okay, Pascal's principle said that if a liquid is enclosed in any kind of rigid shape, which doesn't sort of flex and stretch, then whatever pressure is placed on that liquid will transfer itself equally all the way around the enclosed hydraulic system. So to translate that into a simple, so I've got two syringes here. They're mostly filled with water. There's a little bit of liquid air that's just or air that's sitting inside there. Now that air will compress, but it'll still work for our purposes. Liquids are not compressible. You cannot shrink them by applying force. So it means that if I apply a small pressure here with my right hand, you can see the syringe, the larger syringe moving down the bottom on my left with my left hand. Now, if I were to stop that process and I were to try and resist it by placing my hand here, if I squeeze on this side, this syringe down here, I can feel a force pushing against my right hand as a result of my left hand pushing. Yeah. And so the more force that I apply here, that causes the pressure on the liquid to transfer all the way across and it's interesting to notice that it's very important to notice that force I should say the pressure equals force divided by area pressure equals force divided by area so it's going to be in newtons per square meter or other arrangement that we choose. So what I'm interested to find out if that's the case, if the pressure increases, it increases all the way equally, all the way around this liquid system, that makes sense. What happens if I push one Newton of force in here? What will happen at this end? Now I know just by pushing here that I get a lot of force coming out at that end. But if I push at the larger end, I can easily resist and stop that smaller syringe um, plunger from moving. So I'm not getting the same amount of force depending on where I apply it. Now this would make sense if you look at Pascal's principle which says that the force inside the, um, the pressurized liquid transfers itself equally to all surface area. So if I have a smaller surface area over here and a larger surface area, if the pressure has to be the same and the areas are changing, then the force will have to change to keep the pressure the same. So if I have a larger surface area, then I'm going to need a larger force. And if I have a smaller surface area, I'm going to need a smaller force to keep the pressure the same. Alright, so let's do a calculation. One Newton's being pushed here. How many Newtons of force are coming out at this end? All right. Well, we just said that um, pressure is equal to force divided by area. So what's the, um, the area going to be in this case? Well, if I measure it over here, I put a ruler on it really carefully, it's about 12 millimeters in diameter. So the area of a circle, you know, that's the circle that, of that plunger over here, the circle inside here, that's going to be pi times the square of the radius. So the area here will be pi times the square of the radius which will be 12 divided by 2 as millimeters all squared. So we'll come up with 36 times pi millimeters squared. That's the area here. So when I'm applying a force here, that force is going to create a pressure and the pressure will be the force divided by the area. So the pressure at the top here is going to be equal to the force which is 1 Newton divided by the area which is 36 times pi millimeters squared. And we'll leave them in millimeters squared and I'll show you why in a minute. So if I'm applying 
I'm applying a force of 1 Newton, I'm creating that much pressure inside the liquid, what happens as that pressure is transferred all the way through here to this larger syringe surface? Now let's measure this area. Well, I'm looking at it here now, it looks like it's close to 30 millimetres. So I'm going to say that the area down here on the larger surface area is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared, which is going to be half the diameter. So let's just say it's 30 divided by 2 millimetres squared. And that's going to equal to pi times 15 squared, which is 225. So it's pi times 225 millimetres squared. That's the area of this, that round surface inside here. Yeah, that one. All right, so we now know that that's the area. Now we know that the pressure has to be the same all the way through on the liquid because the liquid's joined up. Um, it has to be the same all the way through here because liquids aren't compressible. We apply pressure here. The pressure transfers itself to all parts of the liquid and all parts of the surface area according to Pascal's principle. So okay, then if the pressure stays the same, we're going to just have to say that force is going to equal to pressure times area. How did I get that? Well, if pressure equals force times area, multiply both sides by area, we get pressure times area is going to equal to force. All right, well, in this case, the area is larger. What is the pressure? Well, here's the pressure. We've just calculated it over here. That's the pressure at the top that's been created by this small syringe. So it's 1 Newton divided by 36 pi millimetres squared. That's the pressure. Now we're going to multiply it by the area this time of the larger syringe, which is going to be multiplied by pi times 225 millimetres squared. Now the millimetres squared, you see how I left them as millimetres, they cross out. The pi's will cross out and we're left with 1 newtons times 225 divided by 36. So the units will be in newtons, which is what we want for a force. And we're going to equal to 225 divided by 36, which is going to equal to 6.25 newtons. So that's really interesting. So 6.25 newtons. So on the way in, we're pushing with 1 newton. And on the way out, we're getting 6.25 newtons. So this indicates to us that we've got an increase in force coming out because of the larger surface area. And mechanical advantage, you'll remember, is going to equal to load over effort. Well, what's the load? Here's the load, because the effort's being pushed in through here if I'm pushing that small syringe. So the load is in here, sorry, the effort's in here, the load is there. It's going to equal to 6.25 newtons divided by 1 newton equals 6.25. So we've got a mechanical advantage of over 6 times the force pushing outwards as we push in if we push from the small syringe. But notice something, as I'm pushing from this syringe, the larger end, look at the small syringe. See how it's moving very quickly, while the large syringe only moves very, very slightly. See that? Now if I push the other way, I push from the smaller syringe, it goes in a long way, but the large syringe only moves very, very slightly on the way out. So that tells us that we've got a velocity ratio that's not equal, just like we have a mechanical advantage that's not equal. And I'll show you in the next step, step how to calculate the, um, the distances moved to create the velocity ratio for this system. Okay, so remember we had, um, just like we calculated before, we've got one newton of force coming in here, and we have 6.25 newtons of force coming out. Let's do a little experiment. If I mark this area here, like that, like this, yeah, and then I move it by, let's measure it here. 
one ten millimeters that distance and I mark this area as well on the larger syringe so I'm going to measure and push this in and watch the larger syringe well, I'll try and line it up so you can see it a bit more clearly maybe if I move this across a touch it might help you how's that does that make it a bit easier not really no okay trust me on this I'll try and keep it rolling. All right, I'm pushing this larger syringe in. I'm moving that all the way to that 10 millimeters section right there. And this one, I'll make a mark where it's finished. There it is. So there's the distance. I move that distance with a small syringe, and that's the distance of the large syringe. So let's measure. We know that's 10. And this one over here moved, it looks like 2.5. So let's say 2.5. Now remember velocity ratio is equal to VR is equal to the distance moved by the effort divided by the distance moved by the load. It's almost the inverse of the mechanical advantage which is load divided by effort. That's distance. So what's the distance moved by the effort? It's 10 millimetres. And what's the distance by the load? 2.5 millimetres, or near enough to it, maybe even a bit less. Um, and we've got 10 divided by 2.5, which we can work out pretty quickly. It's going to be less than a half. Um, 10 divided by 2.5 it's 4. So we've just worked out that we've got a velocity ratio of 4 which means that this input moves 4 times as much as the output does. But we also know that when we push an input force in there we're going to get a multiplier of 6.25. Now that was just a rough guess based on you know measuring a few little things here. What about if you actually calculate it really? Let's do that now. To do that, we're going to have to calculate volume. Now, volume is going to equal to area times height, or distance moved by an area. Now, we've already calculated areas for these two surfaces, and we're pushing in from here. So we have to expect that the volume moved of, of liquid moved by the small syringe is going to be exactly the same as the volume moved by the large syringe. But because there's a bigger area, the distance moved will be less. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so let's do this calculation. So I've just drawn up V1 and V2 here. Try and straighten that up a bit for you. V1 and V2. So volume 1 must be equal to volume 2. V1 must be the same as that moved by V2. Alright, so let's move this syringes to a side for one minute. Now we've already calculated that, that um, volume is going to equal 2 area times height. So what's the area of the small syringe? Well we calculated it to be pi times 36 millimeters squared. Okay, that's the, uh, the area and we multiply that by the distance that it moves to produce a volume and we said that was going to be 10 millimeters. Remember that? 10 millimeters. Now that has to equal to the same amount of volume displaced at the big cylinder which is going to have a different area which is going to be um, pi times 225 millimeters squared. Remember we did that calculation before? 225 millimeters squared. Um, okay and multiply that by a distance which we don't know call h. We don't know how much this is going to move. So let's do the maths. We're going to make h the subject of this. So h is going to equal to, divide both sides by this, it's going to equal to pi times 36 millimeters squared times 10 millimeters divided by pi times 225 millimeters squared and that's it because the h remains on the other on the other side. Pi's can cross out, the millimeter square can cross out, 
and we've got 360 divided by 225. Let's do that on the calculator because 36 times 10. Is so 360 divided by 225 got 1.6. Okay. So we've got a 1.6 difference, 1.6 millimeters, I should say, is the distance going to be moved by the large syringe when we depress the small syringe by 10 millimeters. So given that velocity ratio is distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load, the distance moved by the effort, which was what we inputted into here, was 10. The distance moved by the load was 1.6 and the answer for that, for the velocity ratio, is going to be equal to 10 divided by 1.6. Yes, the calculation. 6.25. Is that a surprise? Not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> because we're assuming our system doesn't lose any energy at all, then the velocity ratio is going to be same as the mechanical advantage, which gives it efficiency of 1 or 100 percent. So that's what we expected. So the velocity ratio is 6.25 as well. Now our own little experiment we got some results that weren't quite accurate but we tested it here using Pascal's principle and just the principle of the equal volume movement movement between the two and we've just calculated the velocity ratio and the mechanical advantage of a simple hydraulic system. And because the velocity ratios and mechanical advantages are different um, we can manipulate those to make them sure that we can multiply force or multiply distances and that's really the, the wonderful um, benefit of hydraulic systems. That's why they're used in brake systems and that's why they're used in, um, in force applications like hydraulic rams on diggers and stuff like that, digging machines. Okay, hope that was helpful.